Let us start by deleting everything in the workspace, then from file, go to append, and import the head model, you can for sure work on any model you like, and I know some of you would love to go with something more fantasy, like monsters or elves, but for us we will keep it simple, and the process is the same. Once you imported the model, make sure the normal are all in the right direction. We will delete the neck part by highlighting the ring edges, and with loop cut selection, we can easily delete those faces. Now the head is separated into four parts, to do that, we can select the middle edge along the face and with inner loops, highlight half of the head, and hit P to separate it. After that, we need to select both parts, and inside edit mode, hit A to highlight all, and with the bisect tool, we can add a cut along the head, and separate the top parts with the same inner loop process. Now that we separated the head, we can add some space between the parts by simply moving them. Once you're done, hit Shift A to add a camera, place it in your front view. Make the frame dimensions around 11 by 1300, and change the focal length to around 36. I will adjust the camera position by moving it along its axes, I will also rotate the head model a bit, just to make the cuts straight. Now, to start animating, I will expand the timeline a bit to see it more clearly, so we first have a ball that comes toward the head center, from shift A, add a sphere, and scale it down to fit the scene, and place it in the center as shown. Now the ball animation will take about 60 frames, and it will end in this position, so, we can move the timeline to the frame 60, then with the I key, add a location rotation and scale key. After that, go back to the first frame, move the ball along the camera axis as shown, and place it above the camera. I will scale it up a bit, and with the I key again, we can add a second keyframe, and here is the animation, quite simple. We can now add an extra key just for more curvy movement, so I will move the ball down a bit, 
and hit I to add an extra location scale key. I did move the ball back along the Y axis, just to make it go further. And that's it, we can now start animating the head parts, go with them one by one, we will start with the bottom right and finish with the top left part. Before we animate the head parts, we need to fill or close them. I did isolate half of the head, and by selecting the edges in each part, we can hit F to fill it and close them together. Now the faces generated don't match the topology of the face, so you might get weird shades on them. It won't matter much once we add the materials. Select all the head parts and make sure to set origin to geometry. So, we will start with this part, select it, the animation will end in this position we are in, so go to the frame 120 and hit I to add a rotation and location key, now go back to frame 60, move this part outside the camera frame as shown, rotate it a bit, and once you done, add a second rotation and location key. And as we did with the ball, we can here also add an extra key in the middle to adjust the rotation. And that's it, once you're satisfied with how it looks, go to the next part and animate it in the same process. So in this part we will end the animation at frame 130, we did that to make the movement more dynamic, and to not having them move together. And as I said, the process is quite the same. So I will comment once it needed. Once we done with the head animation, we can now add those ball over the earring and animate them. From shift A, add a sphere in the scene and scale it down to fit, move it around and place it in the right area over the ears.
with shift D, make two copies and scale the ball down in each one. Select those three spheres and copy them to the other side. I will select those two opposite spheres and join them with Ctrl J, and do the same to the others, so that we end up with three objects. Now for those balls, we will animate the location alone, so move them up outside the camera frame, and hit I to add a location key. We will do the animation on two steps, first to the frame 190, move the ball down halfway, then hit I to add a location key. Then to around the 210 frame, move the ball over the ear and with the eye again, add another key frame. With the right mouse button over the last key, I will make sure it's on easy out. It's probably came in default as easy ease. The remaining two are the same. Move, press I, add a key frame, quite simple. Once we done with those spheres, we can select them all, and move all the key frames back to around the frame 140. I want those spheres to start moving right before the face parts close together. To import the earrings, from a bend, select the file and import it. It's quite big and the origin point need to be at top, so in edit mode, just select or and move it to fix the origin position. Once you done that, move it to the right area and scale it to fit. Then make a copy to the other side.
we will first animate the scale, so select them both, go to the frame 210, and hit I to add a scale key. Go back now to around the frame 166, scale the models by zero, and hit I again to add a second scale key. We can now select those keys on the timeline and move them to make the animation more smooth. Here in those diamond shaped parts, we can select them in edit mode and separate them from the main object. They still follow the main shape with the scale animation, so now we can also animate the rotation in those parts alone. Add a rotation keyframe at zero value, then move along the timeline, and in the transformation to the right, we can make the Z rotation around 180, hit I over the Z value to add a keyframe. We can also in the same process animate the rotation in this small part and give it a negative value to rotate in the opposite way. Once you're done on this side, do the same process in the other one. Now once we done with the animation, let us add some lights to the scene, switch to the render view and put the timeline on the last frame to make the model visible, then, I will go to the world light, from the yellow dot on the color field, we can add an environment texture, open it and select the HDRI map, make the strength on 2. I will also add a new plane, and rotate it to cover the background. After that, go to the material settings and hit new, for the plane, we will make the color a light blue one, and you can copy the hex code if you like. I did also add an area light and place it to the left. For the remaining materials, I will use the kit library to shade them. Look for metal scratched and drop it on the top left part. The bottom right part will take the same material as shown. 
We can now select those two parts and inside edit mode, hit A to select all, then by pressing U we can smart UV unwrap the texture over the head. The second material will be a white reflective one, so add it to the remaining two parts on the head. In those parts, I will isolate them, and assign to the inner faces the metal material. Then again, select all faces and smart UV unwrap it. For the area light, make the size around 3 to lose the sharpness, make the color blue and increase the power to around 25. Those colors for both the lights and the background plane are experimental, so have your way with them, and settle on what you like. I did assign the metal material to all the spheres in the scene, and I will also assign it to one of the earrings, while the second one will take the white material. We also need to add some light probes to the scene, start with the reflection cube map. Add it and scale it to cover the scene. Next is the irradiance volume, do the same and scale it to fit. In the irradiance settings, double the resolution on all axes. Now to every render settings, enable the ambient and the bloom. The metal material is a bit bright, so I will darken it a bit. I did add a mix shader and mix the metal node with a glossy one. We can now make the color dark for the glossy node and put the roughness on zero value. I did also change the scale here to around 3 and put the alpha value on 8.5, and that's it. Now back to the render settings, check the space reflection box and enable the refractions inside. Make sure to turn on the motion blur. In the volumetric, put the tile size on 2. In the shadow tab, make the cube map on 1024, and enable the high bit depth. For the color management, you can add some contrast with the look options. And that's it. Once you're done. Open the indirect lightings and hit bake.
And here it is, we can now render the first part of the animation, we will continue with the grass growing in the next part, so for now, assign a folder to the output, and for video exporting settings, change the file format to video. In the encoding, put the container on MPEG-4, and make the output quality high. Now hit render animation and save the first part. See you guys next time, goodbye.